Hello and welcome to this video for module two of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the first module, then you can find the link in the notes below to get started. For this demo, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you'd like to follow along with the demo, then you can easily do that too. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the notes that accompany this video. In this video, we'll be laying the foundations of the Netbox data for our fictional organization called TLE Consulting. This organizational data is critical and according to Netbox best practice should be added at the start as everything else is built on top of it. Okay, so I'm logged into Netbox as the main admin user and you can see I have a completely empty database. The very first thing to do is set up the network engineers, Eric and Susan as users on the system as they are going to be the two main users for now. By setting up separate user accounts for them, it's easy to track what changes each user is making to the database. To do this, log into the Django backend of the Netbox system by clicking on Admin and then Admin again. Django is a framework for building web applications such as Netbox, and this is the Django administration site. So go to Users and click Add, then enter the name of Susan and a password and click Save. Then select staff and super user status, which means that Susan can access both the Django admin portal and has all the permissions to the Netbox database. Scroll further down and you can see that explicit permissions can also be set. And this is the way that you can be more granular with user permissions. For example, you could restrict a user or a group to only have read-only access to device data. This could be helpful in a scenario where you have a junior IT support staff member who might need to check what devices are at a certain location but you don't want them to make any changes. For now though, just click save and add another down at the bottom and add Eric now with the same permissions as Susan. Okay, now that's done, exit the Django admin portal by clicking view site to get back to the main Netbox application home screen. So log out with the admin account now and log back in as Susan. Great, so we can stay logged in as Susan to do the rest of the work for this module. First of all, Susan needs to set up the tenants. TLE Consulting is using the tenancy feature to define its internal business units and associate them with objects. The individual tenants will be members of a tenant group. So click organization and then click the plus sign next to tenant groups. Then give it the name of TLE departments. Note how the slug is automatically generated and then simply click create and that is the tenant group set up. Okay, so next add the tenants by clicking add tenant in the top right corner. So the first one is sales. And note that the group is being pre-populated as we're already working within the tenant group. Then click create and add another and do the same for finance, IT, marketing, and lastly, consulting. Great, then click on tenants to get a nice table view of them all. So that's the tenants set up based on the departments and Susan can now associate these tenants with other objects as she adds them going through. Next, set up the regions. And as you know from the course notes, TLE Consulting is present in four parent regions, Africa, Asia, Pacific, Europe, and North America with subregions nested within them. For regions, Susan could click on add here, just like we did for tenants, but as she needs to add quite a few regions, it makes sense to bulk import them to save time. To do this, simply click on regions and then click on the import icon in the top right. And there is the option to either paste in the data in comma separated values format or upload the data as a CSV file. Note the CSV option section at the bottom indicates which fields are required as a minimum for the data to be accepted. In this case, it's name and slug, and these are already pre-populated. Now within their regions, our example company have nested regions. For example, the city of Los Angeles is a subregion of the state of California, which is in the United States. And the USA's parent region is North America. I'm sure you get the picture. So just use the parent field here too, when adding the subregions. So to start, add the top level regions by pasting in the names and slugs. And as these don't have parents, just add a comma, but leave the value empty for the parents column. Then add the other regions that are nested below them by pasting in those two. And where they have a parent region, include that too. So paste in the countries, then add the US states. Then finally down to the city level. And note here that Brisbane is included as a region. 
And this is the geographical location of the new site that Eric and Susan are going to be deploying. Okay, great. So click on submit and there are all the regions created using the bulk upload method. Click view all to see how the regions are nested. For example, Johannesburg sits under South Africa, which comes under the Africa parent region. All right, so next up, Susan needs to set up the site groups and sites. Site groups are used for functional groupings and a site typically represents a building within a region and or a site group. So TLE Consulting has two site groups based on the function of the sites. The first is branch. So add that manually by clicking on organization and then the plus sign next to site groups. So the name is entered as branch and add a description of TLE branch sites. Click create and add another. And this one is now corporate for TLE corporate sites. Okay, so now the site groups are set up. Go ahead and manually add the site for the new Brisbane branch office. So this will be a member of the branch group and then click add site. So the name is AUBRI01. Leave the default value for the slug. As this site is not active yet, set the status to planned. From the drop down, select Asia Pacific, Australia, and Brisbane. This is a branch site, so there's no need for a facility. Similarly, there is no ASN for this site, so skip that. Set the time zone to be Australia, Brisbane, and add a description of new branch site. There are no tags set up yet, so skip that, but do select the TLE department's tenant group and then the consulting department as the tenant. Next, add in the address and the coordinates. And then just go ahead and click create down at the bottom here. And that's it. The new Brisbane site is set up. Okay, so as you know, TLE Consulting has a number of other sites around the world. So make use of the bulk upload feature again here to save some time. This time go to sites and click the upload link. And here is the form to submit CSV data again. For these sites, add the name, the slug, status, region, group, and tenant. So just paste them in. And this time, set the status of them to be active. Click Submit, and that's the import completed. So now click on View All, and here is the full list of sites, including the planned new site in Brisbane. So now the sites are set up, the next step is to add the locations. To recap, a location can be any logical subdivision within a building, such as a floor or a room. All TLE Consulting branch sites have a single location for IT equipment, the comms room and the corporate sites have the comms room plus an additional location within them, the on-premises data center. So once again, Susan can manually add the location in the new Brisbane site and use the bulk upload for the other sites from CSV data. So from locations, click on add and then select the region as Brisbane. The site group is branch and the site is AUBRI01. The name is comms room, the status is planned, and then lastly, the tenant group is TLE departments and the tenant at this location is the consulting department. Okay, so go ahead and click on create and there is the new location all set up. Okay, so now click locations and then the upload button for the bulk import of the rest of the locations. We'll set the headers to site, name, slug, status, tenant and description and paste in the rest of the data. Notice how for the London and Chicago sites, there are two locations, the second one being the on-premises data center, and then click submit, and that's now imported 11 locations successfully. So click on view all to get the nice table view again of all the locations. Racks are physical objects into which devices are installed. Netbox models each equipment rack as a discrete object within a site and location. In our example, all sites have at least one rack where network or IT equipment is installed. Users can also create custom roles to which racks can be assigned. And TLE has defined their rack roles as infrastructure, compute, and storage. So first of all, to create the rack roles, click the plus sign next to rack roles. And the first one to add is infrastructure. Leave the color as gray and add a description of mixed IT infrastructure. Then click create and add another. Next to add is the compute role. Select Amber. This doesn't need a description as the clue is in the name. And then add the last role type of storage. Go with Brown and click Create. Okay, so now the comms room location at the Brisbane site has a single rack that is used for mixed IT infrastructure. So click the infrastructure rack role and then click Add Rack. 
The region is Brisbane, the site group is Branch. Then select the site and the location is the comms room. Give it the name of AUBRI01 RK01. Status is planned again and the role is already set to infrastructure. The tenant group is TLE departments and the tenant is consulting. Now, as this is a branch office site, the requirement is only for a half height rack. So select four post cabinet, 19 inch width and 22 rack units in height. Optionally, you could set the outer dimensions also here if required and then click create. So there is the new rack for Brisbane all set up. Now to add more racks, there is the option to clone an existing one in the top right, or you can do the bulk import again. So paste in the data for the existing racks with the headers of site, location, name, tenant, status, role, type, width, and U height. Note that here the London and Chicago sites have two locations, the comms room and the on-premises data center. And the data center racks are full height, 42 rack units. And there is a mixture of roles, infrastructure, compute, and storage. So once again, click on submit and Netbox successfully imported all of our racks. To complete the organizational setup, Susan is going to add some contacts. A contact is an individual responsible for a resource within the context of its assigned role. Contacts can be members of a group and contact roles define the relationship that a contact has with an assigned object. Unique contacts are created once and can be assigned to any number of Netbox objects. So to start off, TLE Consulting has two contact groups, IT and Facilities Management. So from contact groups, click add, and then the first one is IT with a description of IT staff. The second one is Facilities Management with a description of Facilities Management staff. Next, add the contact roles. Again, clicking add. The first role to add is Operations, and the next role will be Emergency. All right, so now add the individual contacts, starting with Susan. She's in the IT contact group and she is an awesome network engineer. And then add her phone and her email. Then do the same for Eric, who is also in the IT group. He works with Susan as an awesome network engineer and he can be reached on the same number and he has his own email address. The last contact to add is Alexa, who works in the facilities management team and is the facilities manager there. So complete her contact details as usual and then click contacts to view the list. Now contacts are assigned to objects and most core objects in Netbox can have contacts assigned to them. And the way that TLE Consulting has chosen to assign them is at the site group level. So go to site groups and then click the branch site group. And then once in the object, click on add a contact. For the group, select the IT group, then Susan as the contact, select operations for the contact role, and then set Susan to be the primary contact. Then add another, and this time select Eric and make him the secondary contact. Lastly, add another, and this time select facilities management, and then Alexa as the contact, giving her the role of emergency contact, and then click on create. Then when the branch site group object is displayed, it now shows the contacts that have been assigned to it. So the point here is that there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to assigning contacts, but the data model has been designed so that you create the contact only once and then assign it to as many objects as required in a manner that suits your own organization. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how to model an organization within Netbox, and hopefully you had fun along the way on your own Netbox instance. Thanks for watching.